Every year, about 200 animes are produced. So why did I choose this anime? It's pretty simple. I just thought the name was funny. I mean, it's called Peter Grill. Uh, why wouldn't you want to watch it? With a name like that, it's gotta be good. Is Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time worth your time? I mean, fuck. You can't really watch this anime with the expectations of something grand. It's no season 8 of The Simpsons. It's more season 20. A family guy. You have to go in expecting nonsense. I should probably tell what this anime is uh, before diving deep. Peter Grill is an anime that was released during quarantine and is about the hero, Peter Grill. Hey guys, my name is Noah Microwave. What name is that? How unlucky do you have to be to have the last name of an appliance? Alright, the anime. Basically, Peter Grill is the strongest person in the whole world. And, you know, everything and everyone wants to bang him. You know, so they can have his children. Now, if you're a goon, you're probably like, hell yeah. But there's one problem. He's already engaged to the daughter of his guild master. So, you know, if he cheats, that's probably going to be the easiest way to start a war. Now, is this anime about him avoiding those devious characters? No, uh, he cheats a lot uh, with every single character who pursues him. You know, this guy can rival Dr. Seuss. This is where we see the dub Mr. Grill gets that causes him to become the strongest mammal in the whole world. This is also the first human to bring home the gold in a hot minute. Ew, are they running on a treadmill? After the fight, while running to the church to meet his now fiancée Luvelia, the daughter of the guild master from the guild Brave Swordsman Guild, he gets confronted by an ogre who congratulates him on his win, and then mentions how since he's the strongest man in the planet, uh, she wants his kids, but she doesn't say it like that. Uh, she says it like, f fucking this. What's this AVGN-ass language combo? Man bazooka juice! Sounds like an urban dictionary word. Oh my god, he on X Games mode! He reacts uh, accordingly, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, you kind of did. You only just met the guy. Whoa, Peter Grill, no need to be xenophobic. She only asked you a simple, easy, non-problematic question. The least you could do is answer. Uh, that doesn't make it any better. Also, is that a question or a statement? The ogre's big sister, Lisa, appeared... Okay. The ogre's big sister, Lisa, appears to hopefully tell Mimi, this fellow, to piss off. Loins? What is this, the mid-1700s? That, that actually might be the case. So to convince Mr. Peter Grill, they say how strong and epic ogres are, like it's an advertisement. While approaching Mr. Grill, he absolutely trolls the hell out of him and crawls away. I, you're out in the open, man. Just book it. No, 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 no. We gotta, we gotta sneak away. Like you're stealing candy from your parents. Yeah, you tell him, Peter. Peter Grill, on my pride as an ogre, you shall not get away. Well, that's too bad. You, you just did. Peter meets up with Luvelia at a church, so they can then go up to Luvelia's dad for a blessing. You see, Luvelia was an extremely sheltered child, to the point where she doesn't know how children are truly made. Man, that old fart got a Rapunzel. Sigh, so, gee whiz, I sure am glad to accomplish my one true goal in life, but all these other problems are appearing now. Sigh, so, exposition, sigh. So, so the ogres, um, they broke into Peter's room, so he just kicks them out. Literally. Lisa and Mimi go apeshit, which wakes up everyone else in the apartment complex. And they're all like, what is this, Diary of a Wimpy Kid 3? Peter, okay, I know this looks bad, but all you need to say is, they're trying to do the nasty with me, and I don't want to do that with them. This is just assault. Come on, Peter, stick to your guns. Tell him to fuck off. I believe in you, Peter Grill. Don't give in. Stay alive. Anyways, he cheats. Good job. While going apeshit, because, well, he just cheated, Luvelia's at his door, checking up on him. And, oh, okay. Uh, the episode's already over. Damn, they're like half the length of normal animes. I wonder if that's for the budget. I mean, this animation studio has only worked on three things. Two of those being Peter Grill adaptations. Anyways, how will Peter Grill deal with this devious situation?
With quick wits, Mr. Grill puts the two ogres in the closet while he greets Luvelia, and hijinks ensue. Luvelia tells Peter that they're gonna tell her father about them being engaged. So Geeter Prill says, Let's do it! And the old fart says no. And then he threatens Peter uh, with death. So Luvelia says, You know what? If you can't be cool cool with me marrying Diet Cloud Strife, I'll just cut ties with you. Bye bye. So reluctantly, he gives it to his blessing. As if that'll mean much from Dr. Insano over here. Ooh, guild celebration, baby! It's kind of funny how Peter Grill is the best at physical fighting, but is absolute shit in word fighting. <laughs> and the fact that you've already kind of fucked it up. While relaxing at the special table, the two ogres appear to, well, do their thing. The ogre goons completely ignore Peter Grill's engagement and just say, I still want the strongest child, damn it. And to be honest, I don't respect the hustle. While getting TSA inspected, Peter hears Luvelia approaching from the hallway and hides the two under the table while sitting his ass down on the chair. And it works. No one ever notices. Not even the Guildmaster, who can 100% see that he's got the third leg hanging. The Guildmaster wants to have Peter's seat, and Peter's like, no, it's mine. Finders keepers, losers weepers. And right as the old timer grabs Peter, Luvelia tells him to stop. And we now see why he hates Peter Griffin. A uh, Rick and Morty bullshit. So he does the classic walk of shame to drink his problems away. Damn, that's the first time anyone's talked back to that goon? Christ, Peter, that probably took a lot of balls. Uh, let's just hope he doesn't figure out about your affairs, or else you'll lose all of them. Oh yeah, uh, the Guildmaster's name is Albatross. Albatross. While Lavelia stops Albatross's tirade, the ogres decide to show themselves once more. Okay, that doesn't mean consent, you oaf. Uh, anyways, he cheated again. Listen, uh, Peter, cheating once is already shitty enough, but twice? This episode starts off with an elf breaking and entering. She even has the same motives as the ogres. The two cause such a ruckus that Peter's pal walks it and just says, uh, Not my business, see a fucko. Oh, by the way, this elf's name is fucking Vegan. Who's the name director? Is that a thing? Who cares? What's the next character gonna be? A goblin named New York City? Dragon named Flamethrower. The reason why Vegan needs Peter Grill is because her village is gonna die or something, and the neighboring countries are terrorizing them because they suck. Basically, it's for a reputation boost. Good, Peter Grill. Now just show her the door. Uh, what, what could that be? Well, Vegan leaves after cursing him. I, I think that's what she did. We cut to Luvelia and her squad traveling through the forest. They seem to be attempting to kill something, and by the sounds of it, it's real dangerous shit. Oh, Cthulhu. That's what we're going with? Fucking, alright, I guess. Peter gets this news soon after and rushes off to save her. Christ, of course it does. It can't just kill everyone, it has to go the next step. So this thing is so fucking strong, it can't be affected by a sword? Oh god, oh no, it stopped at a cliffhanger. I, I wonder what'll happen. Anyways, Peter saves her in the last moment. Wait a fucking second. How in God's name did Peter destroy that thing? Now, I get it. Strongest person in the world. However, Luvelia attacked the arm and her fucking sword broke. Is it because she hit the monster's nail like a fool? B probably, but that also means her sword fucking sucks. Oh, and he kills it by going for the head. Great job, Mr. Grill. You saved the day again. Oh, come on. What you talking about? You just saved the daughter of your guild and your fiance. Come on, man. You don't need to be modest right now. You killed some diet almost star Cthulhu bastard. Why not celebrate? Oh. Get a rock hard A boner spell. A foolish decision of not wanting to have sex with you? Shut the fuck up, vegan. So basically, if he doesn't cheat on Luvelia with Vegan, his penis will essentially stop working. However, you'll no longer have to deal with Vegan 
and the ogres with the exchange of not having a family with your soon-to-be wife. So, he does it. God damn. Peter Grill would live a hella tight YouTube life. I cheated on my soon-to-be wife with who? You won't believe what happened to me at the hot spring. Jesus Christ, vegan, you made the man cry. I feel like this is one of the only times where it's not Peter's fault. I got an idea. Hey, Peter, want to get rid of vegan? You ever heard of OJ Simpson? All Albatross's gears are grinded, because Luvelia is slowly drifting away. Are you daft? That you, That's usually what happens when a child grows older. They tend to go away. He gets a note about a marriage proposal? Hey, Albatross, uh, I don't know if your facilities are failing, but Peter's already kind of engaged. Uh, delightfully devilish, Alby. The message was from Orkland. I swear to God, if they're just orcs... That'd be real lazy. So basically the thought process is, what if we were to trick this as a possible marriage proposal, but then if the two don't hit it off, it won't happen. Or at least that's what they tell Peter. Albatross's plans are for Peter to give in to temptation and, well, cheat. Thus, Albatross can then execute Peter Grill. Hey, yeah, true. Hey, I thought she didn't count because your penis would blow a fuse. Well, they aren't orcs. They're pigs. Man, that guy really likes pizza. Peter thinks he has the upper hand as the pigs aren't attractive to him. However, the princess of Orkland exists, who, while isn't conventionally attractive to the pigs, are to, well, Mr. Grill over here. Wait, they are orcs. Boo, that's a shitty town name. She has two sets of ears. Do they both work? Is one a technical birth defect? Come on, Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time writers. You gotta fill me in on the details. Nice walking animation. Looks like they're standing in the middle of a bouncy castle. <laughs> what kind of conclusion led you to that? Well, uh, there's a first time for everything. <laughs> the Goon Squad? Okay, if I'm ever royalty, oh mama, just you wait. I'm naming my henchman the Goon Squad. Sounds kick ass and funny. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying enough to work with scaring them. I don't know how that's going to cause Peter Grill to cheat, but whatever. Surprise! Piglet was just wrapped up into the situation and had no say whatsoever. Because of the more human-like appearance, Piglet's considered an outsider to her society. That's pretty interesting. I would have never expected Peter Grill, of all things, to take this approach of satire, showing the perspective of a culture and how they view beauty and that effect on somebody. Anyway, she runs off, which causes her to run into the Goon Squad, and Classic PG tells the squad to back off and... I don't know, flicks their eyes. So because Peter saved Piglet's life and then compliments her, she loves him now and yada yada yada, we all saw this coming from a mile away. So the two go touring around town. Well, Piglet has a good time. Come on, Peter, you can at least crack a smile. It wouldn't kill ya. Okay, actually, in this situation, it might. Later that night, Peter calls out King Orc and their bullshit and how it's just for classic political points. Boo, come on, Peter Grill, make a twit longer about this shit. We can get it trending by tomorrow if we believe. Yeah, you tell him, Peter. I guess that's sort of fair. I mean, you can definitely become pals with someone in a day. I highly doubt romantic interests can spring in that short amount of time, though. Christ on a bike, Albatross. You really want to keep Luvelia to yourself. Like you have the whole series. No shot. Albatross gave Piglet a Viagra potion? Uh, that's, that's a little too late to do that. Uh, you, you might have just contributed to killing a man. This was cause you goons are running out of money? 
What a surprise! You're telling me Albatross, a man who runs off of intuition and goes apeshit often, is causing your clan to lose money? What? No! Peter confesses and tells Piglet that he's already married. Uh, problem is, polyamorous relationships are normal in the orc world. Come on, Piglet, don't be a sheep. Don't follow the trends. So Piglet cries, because Peter won't accept her advances. And when Peter comforts her, uh, she goes in for the kiss, and then Peter cheats again. Wow. No way, he did the meme! Oh, mom, r slash anime memes will love this show. It's because it has the epic memes. The next day, Peter convinces Piglet not to tattle on him, you know, so he doesn't get resi Ford. And you want to know how? By giving this literal, this is a government inside job, uh, don't give in speech. Uh, what, uh, what turn did this take? Sick, Peter doesn't turn into a head mount on the wall. You are one slick Keebler goblin elf. During a private conversation, Piglet tells Jack Poole that she'll stop Orkland from getting his chili <laughs> with ulterior motives, because why the hell not? Surprisingly, those motives aren't just to dick around with Peter Griffin, but to decimate her homeland. Uh, well, we all have some troubles with our hometown, you know, some more extreme than others, but hey, to each their own. Damn, bro, Piglet busting out the hospitality and parent competency. Actually, wait, Piglet's the only one that has shown that she'd make a good partner to Peter. And all she had to do was make food. Everyone else either threatened him or told him, If you don't do it with me, your dick will fall off. Hey, whatever your name is, your time in the spotlight left like a dillion years ago, right? Get the fuck out. Jesus Christ, why so rude? It's not like you're any better, alright, Captain Fucko? Did you make any food? Alright. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Fuck vegan. Dumbass name. You only want his children because your village is getting bullied because you goons suck. Really? Vegan, come on. One X swipe to your head and, and you're gone, right? It's not Solid Snake versus Liquid Snake, where Liquid Snake has an advantage with Metal Gear Rex. It's more like Leon versus Mr. X, where you'll get your ass kicked. What the hell? We don't even get to see a clobber to the head. What? Just the aftermath. Boo! Peter, they did that to you. They're not gonna listen. Even after all the shit those four gave him, he still helps him out. I don't know if that shows how good of a person he is. Uh, never mind, not really. He did cheat a lot. Oh man, you don't gotta do all this nonsense. Just go onto his computer and look for the world seed you want. And there you go. Right there. Oh, you meant sperm. Yeah, I can't help you there. So everyone argues about, oh, uh, he's my man, dickwad. So to truly see who Peter's gonna choose out of the four of them, even though Peter dies inside every time he Keebler Elves enters presence, Vegan summons an attraction checker. What are they echolocating his penis? This fucking suck. Fuck this bit. It's just fan service. Just like the whole series. Damn it, why'd I want to review this again? Given the circumstances, I've been left with no choice but to grant you my blessing. But mark my words, Peter Grill! You will no, I mean, this shit is creepy pasta! What are you doing here? You could say it's granddad on EXE. Hey guys, let's salute. Keep it together. Okay. His okay. last name is Grill. Okay, guys. So, okay, guys. And what would it change if his last name was Desktop? What's his fucking name? <laughs> <laughs> if, if my last name was Grill, I'd fucking hang myself. <laughs> I, I get the, it's I like get the saying, stuff. oh my god, his name is so funny. His name is John Bluetooth. Okay, guys. We <laughs> got... Okay, guys. Well, we if, got... I, if my name was Bluetooth, I'd fucking... Oh, 
I'd, I'd, I'd kill myself. Yeah. Because killing right. myself would not be enough retribution for that last right, name. Gotta... All right. Before the episode ends, the the hornometer, the hornometer, fucking gets demolished, and the four decide to have a whole ass treaty and a document on who can do the Peter shake and when. With only one day in each week where no one can do the sex with him. Peter's going on a date with Fluvelia, cause today is his chillax day, the only day in the week where he doesn't gotta fear about those penis pursuers. And it goes well, none of the sex scavengers take him away, and they even have a nice fancy dinner. The two are all dappered up and Peter doesn't look like he wants to kill himself. Sorta. <laughs> well, that moment didn't last long, god forbid Mr. Grill have some peace and quiet. <laughs> I hate you, you Diet Shrek pizza. Pizza shit. Oh, is this one of those trainings? What lesson is this? How to avoid Homer choking you to death? Okay, n no, you're just an enabler, you dunce. Alright, listen, Peter. I know you're not an American, and this isn't present day, but buy a gun. I don't give a shit how. Just buy one, alright? Okay, this is why you stand your ground. Surprise, he sexes them all, because none of them have respect for the law or treaties. Actually, does this make them traitors? I, I don't know, they broke the treaty. Date's over. I, actually, Piglet didn't even show up. At least she has an understanding of how the law works. To recharge, Peter decides to visit the old bathhouse. God damn it, Piglet. I thought you were better than this. Oh, okay. She's just here to wash old Peter's back. How nice. She even lets him get all emotional and just breaks down. Never mind. God, we really are just going through the motions now, are we? Same shit, different day. At this point, I should just give ideas for how Peter should get out of these situations. I, I got one. Ghost all of them. Don't interact with them. Don't look at them. Don't even say their name. Or, or, take Luvelia and run off into the woods. Never to be seen again. Fuck it, I'm just gonna click this shit. If they're doing something that's been done before, I'm gonna maybe mention it and then run along. After doing sex, Peter jumps into the bath and floods it and does a classic AVGN rant. Yeah, that means nothing from you fools. In distress, he dashes off into town, naked, while it's downpouring. This is the face of a man who's given up. <laughs> hey, big fella, I know this is a public place, but you maybe want to sit somewhere else. This guy's going old Jason Russell. This ogre approaches old Grill to help out the poor guy, and the two talk about their problems in a very cool, calm, and collected way. And since they have somewhat similar problems, they can relate to each other. <laughs> That's interesting. I wonder who he's looking for. He is an ogre. It can't possibly be Lisa. <laughs> yeah, the pearly gates are probably gonna open up for this guy. Uh, I don't know about you, grill boy. That does it. You just bought yourself a one-way ticket to hell. <laughs> yep. Makes sense. So the ogre leaves after calming Peter down and giving some hope in him. But not before mentioning how he's gonna try to find the strongest ogre, who's a princess, who's also Lisa. Called it. <laughs> P 
Peter confronts Lisa about, well, you know, her being a princess and all. Peter realizes that because of his actions, if word got out that he not only cheated on his own guildmaster's daughter, but it was with someone from another clan, just all hell would break loose. Oh, anyways, the ogre from earlier shows up at the front desk of some sort of quest giver or the hotel, and the receptionist, Mitchy, really likes muscles, so she goes nuts. The ogre's name is Antonio Spartacos. Mimi shows up, and the two catch up. I'm guessing they were pals in ogre land. Antonio shows up at Lisa's door. I'm guessing Mimi told him where she lives. Oh, he's gonna catch Peter and Lisa going to town. Yep. Anyways, uh, Antonio tries to murder Peter. Listen, man, I get it. You're pissed your crush is with another fella. But you two weren't dating, so why do you want to kill him? Just be like, damn, oh well, and move on. Actually, you shouldn't have traveled across the land to find her, you oaf. The guy, the things people do for... Wait, Lisa did the same thing. Is this common for ogres? God damn. Okay, so to defend himself, you want to know what he uses? Not a piece of the wall, not a pile of dirt to lower accuracy, not even a tree branch. A fucking banana. And it works. Right before Antonio gives the final slash, Lisa tells him to fuck off. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh shit, Lisa just up and fucking left. You idiot, you're leaving your hometown to die, you goblin goon. Okay, Lisa, I was basically on your side for a bit, but never mind. That's a lie. Yeah, no, just let the motherland fall into oblivion because you want to have kids with Peter. Wait, but you never fought Peter to test his strength. I mean, yeah, he's the strongest thing in the world, but you weren't in the tournament, so... To prove that Antonio is stronger than Peter, the two decide to have a battle to see who gets Lisa. Holy shit, Peter, this is your way out. Like, actually, just pretend to eat shit and then boom, you don't gotta deal with these goons no more. Right before the battle, Lisa approaches Peter. <laughs> who cares? Wh Actually, yeah, who cares? Luvelia should know that this is a fight between who gets Lady Lisa. So shouldn't Luvelia want Peter to lose? Peter Hey, do you remember waking up yesterday? What kind of question is that when you met yesterday? Peter Grill, you might be doomed. This is a man who just found out his crush was playing ultimate with some rando. He might just kill you and post on his Instagram story, all oh, women are the same. I guess ogres have an unspoken rule of no snitching. Yikes, this guy was waiting till marriage? <laughs> oh my god, he gets sympathy from the audience. Damn, the one time you want to lose, can't even do that. Champion's difference. Alright, Peter, you just gotta make it till you have to fake it. And then the fight ensues. Antonio is apparently gonna do this, you are gonna die move, but it looks like he's just gonna charge at Peter. Man, this shit's easy to dodge, it's like Rezzy. Yeah, you know, stand in one spot, then around the last second, run to the side while the zombie lunges at you. Then you can pass by the zombie and save some ammo and health. If you don't burn the zombie, do they'll become a prince of and he's on the same Jail sandwich. Oh shit, this is way easier than Rezzy 1 dodging, it's just a quick time event. Ah, I see. Peter's doing the try not to win challenge and fails every time. Holy shit, he's dead. For sure, no shot he can survive a neck crack like that. I know we saw one mini scene of Lisa destroying her kind in battle, however we don't see her battle anyone. For all we know, the super battle could have never happened. Actually, yeah, that makes sense. Do you think the King of Ogres would let some randos defeat his daughter, the princess, in battle? Yeah, I didn't think so. Lisa, you're full of shit. 
Because Antonio wants to win the battle, he wants the real Peter Grill to train him. Alright, hell yeah, time for the one week training montage, baby. Peter. Piece of shit, you're fucking with him. So everyone helps Antonio so he can kick ass, either by training, a special diet, or magic steroids. Oh my, okay, looks like they gave him just some sort of like super P90. Wow, that week was quick. Two whole minutes. He better win, alright? Lisa really just grinds my gears. Well, her plus Mimi, Piglet, and Vegan. So, because of the intense training, he should win, right? Nah. Wanna know why? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't really change anything though. Peter sure as hell wasn't olive oil and yet he still went ape shit. After Antonio wakes from his slumber, Peter tells him the bad news and he takes it well. You wanna know why? Mitchy. She asks him out and he's like, hell yeah. At, at least he has a good ending. Okay, you know damn well he did not intend for that to happen. Probably, yeah. Just like you said, senile. Albatross probably has like a year left in him before he crumbles into dust. Hell, just shove him into sunlight. He'll probably get a sunburn everywhere and die. Wow, Lisa, you did a really good job at changing his mind. Peter Grill is an interesting show. Not really. It's clearly meant to be silly and goofy. However, it's extremely repetitive to the point where you're like, can we try something new? Especially during the middle of the series, you're really just going through the motion. Peter cheats, feels bad, tries to fix it, fucking fails. Peter cheats. You're supposed to feel bad for him cheating, and I can see that working, like when it happened with Vegan, he had no choice or else his dick would shrivel away. But when it constantly happens, every time, and it's always Peter's fault, you start to get a bit desensitized to him screwing up. It doesn't help that he's basically an enabler, never stands his ground, he's the definition of thinking with his penis. Despite being the main love interest, Luvelia, she never does anything. I wish we saw her more. And I get it, with her being the 100% pure mind, she can get boring, but they could have done something with that. Maybe have it so her innocence is so extreme to the point where it becomes a problem. There was a glimpse of it with babies come from storks. You know, Shimonetta did something like that. Took it to the extreme, in fact. Maybe since she has no idea what sex is, have her barge into Peter cheating and have him try to explain his way out of trouble. It could then lead into problems down the road whenever Luvelli and Peter actually have sex. In fact, I wish there was an episode without the pecker perpetrators. During Peter's date with Luvelia, I expected it to just be a normal date without Mimi popping up and saying sex now. It would have been a nice change of pace with a more relaxed vibe and Peter in a calm state of mind. Speaking of minds, the best way to watch this show is to just get a bunch of pals and turn off your brain. It sort of reminds me of those movies from the 70s and 80s. Not too much with the plot, but they make it up with the more comedic moments. Like Caddyshack. You know, with Bill Murray, him trying to kill that gopher, and that rich dude, he's hilarious. In fact, I originally watched the dub because I thought it was funny as all hell whenever anyone said, Peter Grill. It's a simple show that shouldn't require a lot of brain power, so hang out with some pals instead of what I did. You know, Peter Grill, animes these days, how do I explain it? It, it just seems, it, it seems, it seems today that all you see is violence and shonen and sex and harem. But where are those good old fashioned values? And which we used to rely. Lucky, Lucky there's, there's a Peter guy. guy. Lucky there's, there's a man who positively, positively can do all the things that make us laugh and die. He's, He's our Peter guy. guy.
Oh, jeez, Rick, she's gonna kill us. Oh, Morty, you words. idiot. Look what I did. I jammed her gun, oh. Morty. <laughs> we have a force field.